Hello everybody. Welcome to another Q&A meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of morality, charity, and meditation. Everyone who is interested is welcome to join. Please let me know how the audio and video is doing today. Please submit your question in one at a time. Please be brief and precise. I will start reading your question and comment. First of all, Metta Vandana Satu, Terishi, good morning, afternoon, Tanajan. Tony Dear Jan, good afternoon. Video and audio are in good condition. Thank you. Kenneth Han, good morning, Tanajan. You are clear. Thank you. William Sukihoto, Tanajan, Satu, Satu. Meta Vandana, the audio and video are clear, Jan. Thank you. Selena Chiam. Satu, Satu. So far, so good. No question yet. Everybody seems to be happy. Seems to be doing okay. Just stay cool, stay calm, relax. No need to worry. No need to get excited. Just be calm, relax. Next thing as they come, everything is anatta. Everything is natural. Phenomena in which sometimes you can control and sometimes you cannot control. If you want to control, control what you can and leave what you cannot control alone, then you'll be okay. Michael saw Satu Satu Ayi Namasagan Tanajan. Kenneth Han Kenneth Tanki Rock. Greeting Ajahn, may you be well and happy. Video and audio is clear. Metta lo. Satu. We are not the body. The body is our servant. We use the body to communicate with everybody else. The body is like a handphone that we use to connect with other people. Without the handphone, we will not be able to connect with other people who lives in who lives in the faraway places. But with the handphone, we connect. We can connect with people all over the world. Which same thing with our body. We don't have a we don't have any 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 size, shape, or form. So we use the body as our proxy as our representative. We use it so that we can then use the body to connect with other other people's body. But our body are temporary. Temporary. One day this body will have to fall apart. So we have to always remind us of this truth that we are not the body. This body is temporarily is subjected to aging, sickness, and death. So we, so we be clear on this point, and be ready to let go of the body when the time comes. Metalo satu, nang lin lin satu. Terry Shi, I always have, I always have, I always have thick phlegm flow at the back of my throat, and it's okay to know and acknowledge 
their congestion in my throat and swallow and continue to meditate, sitting in silence since I have no mindfulness yet. Jeep Long Gun Sadhu, Meta Vandana, Ajahn can we also take birth as trees. I heard Buddha was a tree on one of his births. No, we cannot take birth as a tree because the tree has no five sensual organs. The mind needs five, the five sensual organs in order for it to satisfy its cravings, its sensual pleasure craving. So the tree cannot satisfy the mind's cravings. So the mind will not take birth with a tree. The mind will only take birth with beings that has five sensual organs, having eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body, which are human and animal. Hong Bi Chin, viewing nothing to ask. Glad Mong Well from Kelantan, Malaysia. Thank you. Kwan Batum Napa Satu Satu Christine Goe Satu Satu Chio Hashem Happy Songkran to Tanajan. May Tanajan have a good health and live as long as Master Ananda. Thank you. Albert Ho Namo Amit Tutu Rusli Alamsaya Namasagan Sam Lam the Ajahn is sleeping, consider sensual pleasure. No, it's, uh, it depends on how much you sleep. If you sleep because the body is tired and needs to, to rest, then this is not sensual pleasure. But if you sleep more than what the body needs, then it's considered to be sensual pleasure. That's why the Buddha want, asks us to keep the eight precepts. The eight precepts forbid us to sleep on comfortable bed because we will sleep for sensual pleasure. Sleep on a hard floor. So we don't sleep over sleep or not or sleep longer than what the body needs. Terishi, because I will have to swallow hard the, the thick phlegm and I didn't know if it's because I am being too aware of my swallowing that I should simply ignore it and focus on the mantra, Bhutto. Thank you, Tanajan. Yes, just concentrate on your mantra, Bhutto, and forget about the flame. Leave it alone. It's like when you go to sleep, you leave the flame alone. The flame won't bother you. Just leave it alone and concentrate on your mantra, Bhutto, Bhutto, until you forget about the flame. Kim Boon Chu, good afternoon, Ajahn. Good afternoon to you. Terry Shi, happy Songkran. And Ajahn, thank you. Adeline Chin, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Sam Lam, thanks. Kyutan Ajahn, Satu Satu. Terry Shi, thank you, Bhante. Terence THD, wishing you well and happy, Tanajan. Thank you. May the same be with you. Try to look at our at the bigger picture of life. And the bigger picture will show us that everything that rises will cease. Everything that comes into being will eventually disappear from the face of the earth. 
So there is really no need to cling to anything because clinging will only cause us dukkha or sadness or stress. So just let go. Everything on this earth is temporary. Nobody could take anything with them when they go. Then you will live comfortably, relaxed and and happy. But in order to be able to let go, you need to practice meditation to get to equanimity. Once you have equanimity, you will have the ability to let go of everything. Question from Pikuni Pasada from Sri Lanka. Please can you describe and explain Piti? I feel that I can come, I can to some extent experience Vasati and Ubeka in meditation. But Piti doesn't arise anymore. Or maybe I have a wrong idea of what it is. Thank you, Tanajan. Piti is usually translated as rapture. When you feel goosebumps or you you have tears falling off you from your eyes. Such a it's an it's a, a, a strong feeling, which can happen sometime and doesn't mean it has to happen every time when you meditate. The real goal of meditation is to have the mind remain still, peaceful and calm, relaxed, and have equanimity. That's the real goal for meditation as other feelings that may arise, just note it for what it is and leave it alone and keep concentrating on your, on your meditation object. Don't worry about anything. The goal is to empty the mind of, of everything, to keep the mind just knowing in empty space and having equanimity. Chi Chin Chu and Haya Jan I didn't see you in the Pindabada today. Are you well? Yes, I walk. Sometimes the camera uh, couldn't take my, didn't, didn't see me because during part of the walk, I, I got on the bus to take a, a brief a break. I walk about now about three fifths of the time. The other two fifths of the time, I take a rest on the bus because of my back is quite painful. If I can sit for about three or four minutes or five minutes, I can relieve the pain. And then I can walk for another 10 minutes or so. So nowadays I won't be walking the whole distance. I'll be walking about two feet, three feet of the distance. The other two feet, I take a break. I stay on the bus. If I walk the whole distance, it will, it will, the back will be very painful and I have to keep stretching my back, back and forth. And this can also cause the, the pressure or stress on the body. So I have to relieve it by sitting. After I walk for a while, I feel painful. I get on the bus and, and sit on the bus for of five minutes or so. Then I get off and walk for another 10 or 15 minutes. Then I get back on again. James Hong, greetings Sajan. Hello to you. Enilam Satu. U.S.C. Thank you, Dhanajan, for sharing your wisdom. Greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Ui hua satu satu. Suklin yap. Dear Jan, every time I meditate, a lot of thinking come for more than half our Ajahn, please tell how to overcome this problem. Thank you, Ajahn. You have to practice mindfulness before you 
humanity. The purpose of practicing mindfulness is to reduce or stop your thoughts. And you can do this by reciting Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto from the time you get up. As soon as you wake up, before you do anything, recite Bhutto, Bhutto. And then just watch your body as you go do your, do your daily routine. Taking a shower, bathing, or dressing, eating. Try to use the mantra to stop your mind from thinking. If you can do this, when you meditate, your mind won't be thinking too much. And you can stop it by concentrating on your breath or on your mantra. Chi Jin Chun, please take good care of yourself. Maybe you should go see a doctor. Thank you. Sam Lam, dear Tanajan, my meditation can we see the shape of the mind or just my imagination? Actually, the mind has no size, shape, or form. So you, you cannot see the mind as like you see the body. But you can see the mind, see the mind by 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 knowing that it's there, that it, it is the knowing, the one who knows, the one who knows everything. That's that's the mind. The one who knows the body knows the the thoughts, for instance. This is the mind, and it becomes apparent or obvious when everything else stops. Like when your thoughts stop, then the knowing will become obvious. May we take good take care, John. Thank you. Patara Pon Bosuk Satu Satu. Christine Koe, Ajahn, please go to hospital to have body check. Worry you may have sleepless. Thank you. Who can know about your body more than yourself? You go to a doctor, you have to explain to him what is your condition. So, and he just gets from what you tell, tell him and he's trying to, to diagnose according to what you tell him. But if you know how to relieve your problems, well, there's no need to go see the doctor. I know my problem and I know how to, to deal with it. So I really am don't I really don't need to go to see a doctor yet. If if I cannot solve my own problem, then I might need to go see a doctor. Sam Lam, thank you very much, Tanja. I wish you stay healthy and continue to guide us. You're welcome. Chio Hi Shan. Thank you, Tanja, for translating the book for us, Nisna. It is so great. You're welcome. Meta Vandana, Jan, do you need an electric massager for your, for your back in my help? I've been given so many things and I really don't need anything at all. I just use common sense to deal with my problem. That's the best solution. Don't, don't depend on external things for your solution because they become a problem eventually, sooner or later. So just rely on yourself, atahi atanonato. You are your own refuge. Use your use your common sense. Use your wisdom and mindfulness. If you have mindfulness, if you have equanimity, if you have wisdom, you can deal with any problem of your body without having to to rely on any other thing.
s u k l i n yeah, thanks, k i r t a n j a n Take good care. That you're welcome. Question from John Pepper from U- from the UK. Greetings, a j a n I work with a charity which has few funds. As a result, I often give my own money to fund projects and to help people direct. This action is ma- marked by on occasion, one by thought that I won't have enough funds to survive into old age, not for my wife when I die. My thought that I am being taken advantage of. Second, I want to give, share, and serve others, but I find I am conflicted. What advice might you give? Well, you have to divide your your resources. First, you have to look up. You look up to your body, your yourself, and your family first. Charity comes afterwards. Then, first, you have to have enough to look after yourself and the people that you are responsible for. Then, if you if you still have any surplus, then use that surplus to help other people. If you cannot help other people, then just 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 follow the Buddha's uh, advice. That you have to accept that everybody has their own karma. Everybody will go according to their own karma. The karma will look after themselves. We don't have to worry about that. If we can help, do help. If we cannot help, then just leave it to karma. The law of karma will will take care of everybody. Uh. Christine Coe, hospital have machine to do body scan. I didn't. I did before my sleep this, but I was in treatment. Can't care, kill me until Chinese tradition or this. Thank, thank you, Chi Jin Chuan. Do you use painkiller to relieve your pain, or do you use mindfulness? Yes, I use my dharma, use mindfulness and wisdom. I never took pain pill, keep pain painkillers. During my ordination, my my whole life as a monk, I never use any painkiller. I just use meditation when I feel I want to to deal with the pain. Just make the mind calm and have equanimity. Then the pain it will not be any problem. So chi chi satu satu. Li de hua, hi Tanajan. I'm aware that life is impermanent, but yet I'm worried about losing my family members. During last Tuesday's Zoom session, you advised me to meditate more. Can you advise me what area of meditation I focus? I focus on things. Mindfulness meditation. Just my meditate to calm your mind down to to equanimity. When your mind becomes calm and enter into jhana, you will have equanimity. Then you will have no emotion. You will have no love, hate, fear, or delusion. Then your mind can accept anything that happens. Your hand on the good day, t a n a j a n Please take care, and may you always be healthy. Thank you. Ananda T. Satu Satu. So chi chi will leave them to karma. That's right. You cannot you cannot help everybody on this earth. There's about six billion people, and more than half of them are in need of help. But you cannot do anything. So they will survive and exist and pass on according to their karma. Sulan Ui, dear t a n a j a n happy to see you again. Hope that your bodily pain reduces and don't give you trouble and daily life. Right now, there is no pain at all. If I sit, there is no pain. I can sit all day long or or lay down, 
I only start to feel the pain when I do walking. After five or ten minutes of walking, the pain will start to appear. But I can relieve it by either sit or I can do stretching, stretch my back back and forth. So there's no problem. I, I'm happy with my situation, so please be happy with me. Don't, don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. Look, at, look after yourself. Don't worry about me. Thank you. If I need your help, I'll let you know, okay? Sweet Anne, dear Tanajan, this is Czech. Here we are using Sweet's account here to listen to your Dharma session. I love how Tanajan shows us by example on how to deal with bodily pain and sickness. Thank you for being such inspiring role model. You're welcome. Kwan Li Man Satu Satu, one tree. Jason Jira Watano Satu Satu, Hotkin Hotkin Satu, Chinese character Satu Satu. If you can calm your mind and teach your mind to accept the conditions of the body, then actually there isn't much you, you need to do. You still do it if you have to, if you find if you think what you do can solve the body, the physical problem. But if you think it doesn't solve the physical problem, then you just learn to live with it. Accept the the condition. And eventually it will pass away. If, when the body stops working, then all the problem with the body will will be gone. When there is no body, then there is no physical problem. As long as there is a body, then you have to be. You have to know how much you, what you can do and what you cannot do. Do what you can do with the body, and and then if you cannot do, then just leave it alone. You handle me learning dharma with you here in this life. Happiness to us. Tanajana Nuodana Satu Satu. We forget that our life is temporary and we take it so seriously and we can become sad and stressful from taking life too seriously. We forget that eventually this life will going to have to be, have to pass away. So keep reminding yourself that life is impermanent. Life is anatta. Sometimes you can control it and sometimes you cannot control it. If you can still can control it, do it. If you cannot control it, then let it be. Then you won't have any stress. You won't have any anxiety, you don't have any worry. Why worry about something that you cannot do about? Sickness, aging, sickness and death. Let it be, let it happen. If you have equanimity, if you have jhana, you're happy, regardless of whatever happens to your body. Because you don't need to have the body to make you happy. You can be happy when you are sick. You can be happy when you are old. You can be happy when you die. If you practice meditation and wisdom. Christopher Cunningham, Satu Satu. Shio Yisheng Tanajan, 
when should we use equanimity? Is there any form of equanimity which is called defeated equanimity? There's only one form of equanimity and that arises from having jhana. So try to get into jhana and then you, your mind will have equanimity. And then when you have equanimity, your mind will be calm and relaxed and not reacting emotionally to, toward anything. You can take things or leave them alone. Kwan Li Man, dear Tanajan, with respect, I am fortunate that I can always relate my practice to Tanajan and receive straightforward and clear guidance from Tanajan. Meeting the right teacher is a rare opportunity. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Barbara Butcher. Dear John, how do I stop someone sending unwanted energy into my body? How to protect myself? I have tried just recognizing it as Vedana, but then get angry and exhausted. That it continues. Thank you. Well, just think of it like this, the, the energy we get from the sun. You know. We cannot stop the sun from radiating, sending, sending us the, the energy, the fire elements. We just have to learn to accept things as they are. Don't try to refuse or resist. You know, don't, 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 ref, don't resist the energy sent by whoever. Let them send. If you have calm and equanimity, they cannot hurt you. So try to practice mindfulness to keep the mind calm and have equanimity. Then you can take everything or leave everything alone. There's no need to do anything. Let them come, let them go. Look at them as natural forces, like the force of the wind, force of the sun. These are things that we cannot control, but we can learn to live with them, with equanimity. So try to practice as much meditation as you can. Practice mindfulness when you're not practicing meditation. Then your mind will have equanimity to take things as they come and to leave things alone. So anyway, dear John, I think thank you for sharing with us and feel inspired how you can use how you can use mindfulness to overcome physical problems. Today I came across an article called Water Cremation that dissolves dead bodies in alkaline process and is considered environmental friendly than fire cremation. Firstly, the idea made me sad to know how the body, as we know, can be reduced to ashes. How can I manage this sadness? Though in theory I understand it is inevitable and it's the nature of things. Well, you have to have equanimity. You have to practice meditation until your mind enter into jhana. Once you have jhana, you will start to accumulate equanimity. When you come out of meditation, you still would have some remaining equanimity. Then you'll find that your mind can accept things as, as they are. Secondly, it made me wonder it reflects if relics can still remain with such dissolving cremation. This I don't know. Relics are just are just earth element. So it's it's also subjected to to change or so, or, or to whatever it might may, 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 may be, you know. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's just an element. It has no self in it. So leave the elements alone. Only look after your mind. Make your mind calm and peaceful and not reacting to anything emotionally. Dear John, I will let text la for the Chinese traditional medicine formula that need time to boy trip bow boy into one very effective after several time 
any of your assistant can help, please don't don't bother. Okay, don't don't send me anything. I don't I don't ask for anything. So please don't send me anything. If I want something, I will ask from you. Okay, S stop bothering me. You are bothering me by 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 trying to try to treat me and heal me. Okay, I can take care of myself. Like I said, if I need your help, I'll let you know. Sandy Lim, good day, Ajahn. Ali Hassan, good day. Tan Ajahn, audio, video, well. I will leave Wei Peng, good afternoon. Satu, Satu. Si Chi Lim, pray Tan Ajahn will be well and healthy. And Maha Satu for Ajahn Dharma teaching. You cannot play for something like this. We are all going to have to get old, get sick, and die. So learn to like, learn to accept it rather than try to pray pray that you don't get or get sick or die, because this will only create stress or suffering in your mind. Pray for acceptance. Accept that I shall be old. I shall be sick. I shall be I shall be dead. Pray for this, and you will get what you pray for. If you pray for not getting old, getting sick, or or die, you will not get what you pray for. So pray for something that you can get, then you can be happy, because you get what you wanted. If you pray for something that you cannot get, then you can be disappointed and sad. Eva Chakma Satu Satu. Kastina Goen Satu Satu. Christine, go ahead. Yes, sir. If needed, kindly let me know. Not mean to bother you. Sorry. Yes, sometimes well-intentioned act can turn into something of a nuisance if you don't use wisdom. Shio Hishan, Tanajan, is it true that liberating insight only arises when we ask the right question? It's not asking the right question. It, it is seeing the problem and see the cause of the problem and know how to get rid of the, of the problem. This is liberating insight, meaning seeing the Four Noble Truths. Cornell Tenedi, Wandami Ajahn, how to differentiate the real Buddha really with not the real one? There's no way. It's just a matter of faith, I, I guess. Because the, the Buddha existed 2,500 years ago. So who's going to trace the history of these relics? So either you just believe or you don't have to believe. And not believing doesn't, doesn't hurt you anywhere. So don't worry about the relics. Leave the relics alone. Worry about your, your practice, how to practice, how to get rid of your dukkha. This is more important than anything else. Luis Danachita Sasso Satu Satu. Su Lan Ui, dear John, thank you for spending time and sh sharing advices with us. I have another question. Is there any difference? Is there any difference between Rahula, the son of Buddha, and children today. How is it that Rahula well behaved and could appreciate the Dhamma, while children today are not as interested in the Dhamma Satu? It depends on the, on their upbringing. If they've been been raised and taught Dhamma from the time when they're young, then they will be more likely. Uh, they will more likely will be interested in the Dhamma. If they have not thought anything when they're young, so they don't see any any reason why they should be interested in Dhamma. They'll be constantly thought to have interest in games and in in things that children are interested in today. 
So it depends on the upbringing, how you teach your own children. If you treat them with the Dharma, then they will be interested in the Dharma. If you don't teach them the, the Dharma, they won't be interested in the Dharma. Your children are your are your students. You are your, you are their teachers. You teach them how, what kind of food to eat. You teach them what kind of language to speak. So they follow you. So if you teach them dharma, they will follow you. But if you don't teach them dharma, then they don't they won't they won't follow the dharma. So it's up to you what you feed them, teach them. Dear Tanajan from Sweet Ten, this is check again. I love your teaching about praying for getting old, getting sick, and die. Instead, best prayers I have ever heard ever, guaranteed to come true. That's right. Your dream will come true. <laughs> we all, we all want to have our dream come true. So why dream about something impossible? Dream of the possible. Don't dream of the impossible. The impossible dreams and the possible dreams, which is better? The possible dreams is better because you can get you can get them, but you cannot get the impossible dreams because they are impossible to get. So so simple, it's real common sense that we for, that we we have we have lost our common sense and being being. Being deluded, being, being what you call, um, being influenced by our delusion, we want something that is impossible, and when we don't get it, we became we, we became disappointed and sad. Juliana U Sato. Colonel Tanadi, one dummy ajan. What is the harmful if one always wear robe and disrobe? Like Babacha for one week, then disrobe. Then another chance, let's say, did that three times a year. Show one better robe or just practice at lay person. Well, it's just like going to college. You go for one semester and then you drop out for another semester. Then you go back in for another semester. So your education is not continuous. So your advance or your progress in education will not be, be, uh, be continuous. So it takes a long time, longer time for you to graduate than if you keep, if you keep studying and don't, don't drop out. Same thing with, with practice. You just have to be consistent. Keep, keep up the, the practice. Don't practice for one month and then stop for another month and then come back and practice for another month. You just have to keep on practicing continuously. Then your path, your, your, your advance on the path will be, will be, uh, will be steady and will, will reach your goal eventually. Chi Chin Chuan, dear Jan, a mom asked me, Chen Laya Mangala Kata to get protection from harm and danger. Is that possible? You, you cannot chant to protect yourself from physical harm or danger, but you can chant and protect your, your mind from mental danger, such as your defilement. If you chant, you can stop your defilement temporarily. Eli Hassan, Ajahn, I follow you 
your way asking in advance before sin. So the one who need will be appreciated rather than sin immediately and make the ones receive being bothered with our one side intention, Satu. You're welcome. Thank you. So then we, dear John, thank you so much. I feel glad to know it is important for parents to let them get in touch with Dhamma from young and be role model. What is your thought if parents send children to Dhamma school where they learn Buddhist concept? Noble truth, four noble truth, eight four paths, etc. From lay people like a Buddhist course for young kids, Sadhu. Yes, it's a good thing, action to do. You don't always need to study from monks. If you are on the theoretical level, you can study from anybody who knows the, the, the theory, like the Four Noble Truths and so forth. But if you practice, then you should go and learn from, from well-practiced monks. They can, they can teach properly how to practice. Terry Shi, thank you, Tanajan, with much loving kindness. May you have a long, long life one day. If our wish can come true, then we will live forever. <laughs> but this is a, another wishful thinking. But at least this is the way we 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 we, we make others happy. Tell them that they will live a long life. But knowing that we knowing that life is impermanent and life is uncertain and our life can end any time sooner sooner or later. Cardinal Kennedy Wanda Miyajan. So which is better? Join retreat with Rome or as a lay person? Any harmful wearing Rome often. <laughs> It's robe, wearing robe are just uniform, you know, it's just a piece of, of ornament, of clothing that you put on. It's not important what you wear. It's what, what's important is what you do. Can you, can you follow the Noble Age Four Path? That's the more important thing that you should consider. Not whether you wear a robe or not wear a robe. Just look at the practice. If you can practice without wearing a robe, then it's okay. If you wear a robe and you don't practice, then it's not okay. So look at what you do. If you can do the four, the end noble path, end noble eight four path, the the noble eight four path, whether you're putting in robe or not, that doesn't matter. Terishi, wishing you good, healthy, long life. We love and respect you very much. Thank you. Anna Goldman, Satu Satu.
Bruce Lee and Amsaya, such is life, such is the body. Thank you very much for your kind wisdom. Sadhu, thank you. So then we dear John, thank you for inspiring me again. This weekdays I have been feeling tired. Last two days have not meditated. I will meditate later after this session ends. Satu Satu. Yes, do as much meditation as possible. It will help relieve the stress in your mind and and increase the, your energy, your mental energy. Any lam satu satu, chi chin chuan, dear jan, there are different realms of existence. Can the ghost deities and asura affect human by dist disturbing them or hurt them? No. No other being can disturb another being. It's, it's, the, own, it's the mind's own delusion that can disturb the, the mind, the own mind. Not other, not other mind, not other being. Colonel Tanadi Wandamia Jan, what is the purpose of the of the precepts? Number eight, not sitting or sleeping on high chair bed. It means high chair bed means comfortable, luxurious bed or chairs. Because when you when you sit comfortably or you sleep comfortably, you tend to get lazy. And you want to do more sitting and sleeping. So you want to sleep on an uncomfortable chair or sleep on an uncomfortable bed to prevent you from being uh, being uh, attached to sleeping or sit, sitting lazily. Lim Sui Kun, Satu Satu. Deborah Rosenfeld, dear John, thank you for your advice last week to protect my mind. This is the most helpful advice. You're welcome. Shio Hishen, thanks Tanajan for your kind explanation, Satu. I am also curious if Tanajan translates Lungta books while you were at Wat Pamanta or later at Vanyan. You mean other books besides the Forest Destiny? I think there's there's two another book called Kamatana, the basis of practice. I translated by uh, by collecting all all the important uh, essential teachings of of Dongta Mahabur and put them in in a in a different context to make it clearer. For for people to understand the teaching of Vamta Mahabur. Two books, Amata Dhamma and, and Kamatana, the basis of practice. You can look up at my website, pastuchat.com. Kalai Lai Namu Amitutu Falling Sun Satu Satu Chi Chin Chuan Dear Jan, you mentioned other existent realms cannot disturb us, but what about animal realms? They are able to affect us like hurting us or spreading viruses. Well, this is obvious. I thought we were talking about the spiritual being. Yeah. So you know, you know, animals can hurt us. So I, I, I thought this is quite obvious. So I didn't need to, to answer this. I thought you asked about other spiritual beings. Uh, can they disturb other spiritual beings? I said no. Holding soon. Sorry, Ajahn. I, I'm asking again. That something can a person dream of enlightenment in this house? I don't know what, what you mean by dream of enlightenment. Yes, we can dream about anything, but dreaming doesn't make it real. The way to make enlightenment real is the practice of the Noble Eightfold Path. You can dream all you want, but you cannot get what you dream. 
You can only get what you dream by practice. Barbara Butcher, dear John, could you explain further regarding equanimity as an active means to deal with aversion and not just giving up or giving into aversion? Thank you. Yes, when you have equanimity, you, your mind remain neutral, doesn't react with, with attraction or with aversion. See? The mind just merely know whatever it comes into contact with. Whatever people do or say, it just merely know. It doesn't react with attachment or, or aversion, or attraction or aversion. Yeah. It doesn't react with like or dislike. It's just merely acknowledging things that comes into contact with the mind, if you have equanimity. But when you, if you don't have equanimity, then you, you will react with like or dislike, with aversion or with attraction. Okay, we have about two more minutes left. If we don't have any more questions, I will have to call this meeting to an end. If you have any more questions, please see me again next week and ask me again next week. In the meantime, please stay calm, stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I will see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye.